It is now time to implement the physics for the Reynolds equation and to couple it to the structural mechanics physics. This can be done via the physics tab or by right clicking the component 1 branch in the model 3 and then selecting add physics. The rightmost pane now changes to an add physics pane. We are going to model the thin film flow by means of the Reynolds equation. The Reynolds equation is a lower dimension form of the Stokes equations. In our case, this is a 2D equation which is defined on the top boundary of the color geometry. In the physics 3, scroll down to mathematics, double click and then double click the PDE interfaces. PDE interfaces is a physics that lets you define a huge class of partial differential equations and solve them by means of the finite element method. Under the PDE interfaces you will find a lower dimensions branch, which we are going to utilize to model the problem at hand. Unfold the different types of lower dimensions equations and select the first one, that is the coefficient form boundary PDE class. Scroll down to dependent variable section and replace U2 for P in the field name and the dependent variables fields. This is since we are going to describe the Reynolds equation, which will be solved for the hydrodynamic pressure P. Click Add to component at the top of the pane, then close it. You will now find the coefficient form boundary PDE physics in the model 3. Select this one and select all boundaries in the boundary selection section in the middle pane and click the minus sign or use the delete key on the keyboard to remove all of the boundaries from this selection. Now click the two patches on the top of the color to ensure that the PDE is defined on this surface only. The boundary conditions for the Reynolds equation is specified by the ambient pressure acting around the bearing. Let us therefore add a Dirichlet boundary condition to the physics by right clicking and selecting Dirichlet boundary condition. The boundaries for the Reynolds equation are the edges of the top surface of the color. Select these six edge segments in the graphics pane. You may need to rotate the geometry to do so. Enter PA as the prescribed value of P. It is now time to define the film thickness function in order to be able to fully specify the Reynolds equation. This is easiest accomplished by first creating the polar coordinates R and theta in console. It can be done by adding variables under the global definitions branch in the model 3. Let's also rename the added variables 1a branch now found in the model 3 to polar coordinates by right clicking it and typing in polar coordinates in the field that pops up. Note that this can and should be done to most of the components on the model 3 to create a model which is more easily understood by yourself and others. The polar coordinates can be defined through the Cartesian ones in a very intuitive and straightforward manner. Let's write r as the square root of x squared plus y squared. Then let's define theta as the inverse of the tangent between x and y by using the atan2 command. The atan2 manages to define theta in any of the four quadrants. In our case we work exclusively in the first quadrant and should be possible to use the normal atan x over or y over x too. Note that COMSOL recognize the units automatically. By means of R and theta we are now ready to define the film thickness equation. To do so, right click definitions on the component 1 in the model 3 and choose variables. The difference is that the variables defined here can be associated with the specific parts of the geometry of the model. The variables defined on the global definitions are for the mother geometry, if you like, of the problem, which is in this case a 3D geometry. Rename variables 2a to film thickness to have it more easily traceable for future use. Then select geometric entity level to be boundary 
and define the top two boundaries in the selection box by clicking them in the graphics pane. Then type my age as the variable name. Reason for not using for example age is to avoid overwriting console's internal variables. Age is actually an internal variable that is related to the element size. In the expression field now write the boolean expression for the film thickness and add a description to, for example, rigid bearing geometry. Add another variable named my age tot there and define the expression h double not my h plus ds times w this equation will define the film thickness for the elastically deformed bearing when we couple the physics together later add a description to this variable to for example film thickness elastic bearing the parameter ds is used to make it possible to switch the effect of the formation on and off. With these definitions we can now define the Reynolds equation for the problem at hand. Let's start by selecting the coefficient form PD1 branch in the model 3. In the middle pane we can now start to define the coefficient form PDE for the problem at hand. Click Equation section to see the class of equations which can be used to model all sorts of different problems. By identifying terms in this equation we see that C corresponds to H cubed over 12 eta in the Reynolds equation. Moreover we see that minus gamma can be used to describe the right hand side of the Reynolds equation including the velocity vector. In console C is interpreted as diffusion coefficient. Let's type in the proper expression there now. The field will present the typed in text in yellow since we have not yet specified the dimensions of the problem correctly. To do this, go up one level in the model tree and scroll down to unit section. Change the dependent variable quantity to pressure PA and replace the unit for the source term quantity with meters per second. Select coefficient form PD1 again and scroll down to find that the text in the field now is black and thus correct with respect to dimensions. Set the source term to zero and do the same with the damping or mass coefficient. Now unfold the conservative flux source which is defined by gamma and type in the expressions for the x and the y components related to the velocity vector given in the problem description. It is now time to test to solve the Reynolds equation. To do so, unfold the study 1 branch and select step 1 stationary. In the middle pane, we shall now modify the study to solve for the Reynolds equation only. This is done by unticking the solve for box for the solid mechanics physics. Then go to study 1 and run the solver by clicking Compute. In order to see the results, we need to define a result section called 3D Plot Group. Right click the Results branch in the Model 3 and select 3D Plot Group. Select the 3D Plot Group 2 branch now created and choose Surface. In the surface pane, 
click the down arrow next to the green and red arrow heads on the expression section heading and choose dependent variable p under the coefficient form boundary PDE1 branch. Alternatively, you could just have been writing P in the expression field. This menu lets you, however, choose from a variety of predefined quantities which might be very useful. Click plot and you will have a visual of the pressure distribution over the pad. Isn't this just amazing? Note that renaming a bunch of branches in the tree would be in its place to do now. Let us finally couple the two physics. Go to the boundary load boundary condition under the solid mechanics branch and replace the boundary load pressure by P times dS. Next go to the parameters and redefine dS to be 1. The physics should now be properly coupled and we only need to tick the Sol4 solid mechanics physics box in the step 1 stationary branch to enable simulations of the multi-physics problem we set out to do. Click Compute and see what will happen.